note of optimism in what's been a recurring theme today, which is the crisis facing journalism. As many of you know, uh, ProPublica is a nonprofit uh, which works with other media organizations to produce the kind of journalism that everybody in this room knows is important, which is journalism about underserved people in remote countries that the world needs to know about. ProPublica and other nonprofits, which are sprung up in this past few years, are never going to replace the uh, brilliant and excellent reporting which is done by places like the New York Times and the Associated Press and the Washington Post and the Los Angeles Times. But what I think our existence speaks to is that there is a fierce desire out there to somehow figure out how to tell these stories. Uh, we're one possible solution. There's many others. And the hopeful message is that a lot of people are trying to work on and figure out how do we continue this journalism. So our series on Disposal Army, I think, is a good example of that. Uh, it began as a story about what we call the, the hidden side of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. We've heard a lot about the soldiers uh, and the incredible contributions they make. But as many of you know, uh, there are many contractors right now in the modern American style of warfare, as there are soldiers on the battlefield. Um, a lot of them are notorious private security contractors like the Blackwater for the world. But there are also a lot of just common, ordinary, everyday folks who are out there working to deliver meals, uh, cook um, for the troops, uh, deliver uh, food and water and the things that they need to make the, our soldiers um, whole. So that was, was the story about was this casualty suffered by this disposable army and how they're often forgotten and uh, never recognized. And so this work began with the Los Angeles Times, which is uh, where I was working for coming for public health. The LA Times reported this work and published uh, many of these pieces. So too did the Washington Post, uh, Salon, uh, and many other and ABC News also featured uh, parts of the story. So by collaboratively working with all these different media organizations and all these uh, different mediums, I think we ended up having a uh, larger impact than um, we normally would have working for a single outlet. And I think the future of, of what we do uh, rests in that kind of collaboration and making sure that these voices of people are heard uh, in as many different forms and as many different outlets as possible. And so I want to thank the others of the Press Club uh, for uh, uh, recognizing the story and also for recognizing um, the potential of collaborative journalism. Most of you, as ST has said, know that there's an army of people. For every soldier, there's a contractor in Iraq and Afghanistan. For every soldier, there are two contractors. And uh, whereas we think of these as you know, the Blackwater people with guns and Kellogg Brown and Root and the profiteering, most of these people don't carry guns. Most of them actually poor people from South Asia, the Indian, Pakistani, Sri Lankan. Um, and they do all the jobs that are dirty, dull, and dangerous. Uh, one young man that I profiled in, in, the, in, in our se the section from Afghanistan was Ahmed Rashad, who worked for military, uh, mission essential personnel. And he's a translator for soldiers, a young man who was passionate like the soldiers he served. And two years ago, this month, he lost both his legs in, an, uh, legs in an explosion. And when he lost his legs, he lost his job. And when he lost his job, he lost his safety and security on a U.S. military base. The soldiers he was with asked if he'd stay with them. For six months, they kept that argument, and he managed to stay the best on the base. As soon as he rotated out, he lost that security, and for a year today, he has been living in hiding on two prosthetic legs. Even today, you know, he is there waiting for one of those 50 visas that the U.S. has granted to Afghans who have helped Americans in the war. For most, David Finkel spoke of the soldiers that, uh, you know, have died, and David Rhodes spoke of uh, the, the journalists who have died, 